Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us this evening. Another webinar from the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. This evening, we have a special guest, Dr. David Newell, Chief of Neuroscience from Swedish Neuroscience Institute. He's also the Chair of Vascular Neurosurgery there. He'll be talking to us about MC aneurysms, one of the smaller group of the aneurysms that still remain surgically amenable, and we're all excited to hear his comments. David, please take it away. Thank you very much, Aaron, and I appreciate the opportunity to uh, uh, give this webinar and talk about uh, middle cerebral artery aneurysms. And I wanted to thank uh, Christine Buckley and others at the Brain Aneurysm Foundation for uh, making this forum possible. Um, I'm very excited about this and uh, some others to come in the future. Um, I chose middle cerebral artery aneurysms to talk about because they're fascinating to me. Um, and right now in my surgical practice, uh, they make a up a high percentage of the aneurysms that I take to surgery because so many of the other ones are 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 now uh, are treated by endovascular means. But middle cerebral artery aneurysms have uh, uh, very unique features anatomically, and that makes them um, unique in terms of their presentation clinically. Also, if you look at this uh, particular um, 3D angiography, this particular patient that had this aneurysm presented with uh, partial uh, blood clot and transient ischemic attacks as a presenting symptom. So um, we'll go through some of the unique presentations of these aneurysms. Uh, but um, what, what we find out is that they uh, require some special surgical skills and, uh, and are not just like the routine saccular aneurysm. And wh what I want to do is start by going through uh, aneurysms in general and talk about uh, where they occur briefly in the classification and then focus a little bit more on some of the unique features of the middle cerebral artery aneurysms. Um, as, as many people know, aneurysms can be classified um, on the basis of a number of factors. One of the most uh, popular classifications uh, is, of, is one based on size. And you can see the uh, small aneurysms are less than one centimeter in diameter. The large are one to 2.5 centimeters. And the giant are greater than 2.5 centimeters in diameter. This uh, picture is from uh, Professor Yassergill's uh, book showing all the various loca common locations of aneurysms along the uh, Circle of Willis vessels here and as everybody knows they occur at, uh, most of them occur at, uh, at known locations and at branch points in the arteries. And they can also be either simple or complex and uh, that's based on whether they have calcium in them, uh, they have blood uh, vessels coming directly uh, off part of the aneurysm and other features that uh, make, the, make the treatment a little bit more difficult. For example, a complex aneurysm may require temporary clipping or multiple clips placed to, to occlude it. And then they can also be classified on how they present, whether they present as a ruptured aneurysm or an unruptured aneurysm or uncertain. And we all know there are certain uh, patients that come in with quite a severe headache, uh, but they have no blood on their CAT scan, no blood on their lumbar puncture, um, and these are said to be a warning leak uh, presentation, and this may represent a sudden expansion of the aneurysm or a dissection into the aneurysm wall that causes the patient's symptoms, um, but are not a, a true aneurysm rupture. So it's important to keep that in mind. Now, the middle cerebral artery aneurysms, I just wanted to go through um, uh, some of the presenting symptoms. As I mentioned, uh, uh, the classification, the, some of the physiological considerations that come from where they're located uh, in the circulation, some anatomic considerations, some of the treatment options, and then some unique, and endovascular, unique surgical and endovascular uh, techniques that have been uh, used to try to treat these. Now, if you look, um, this is a, a a picture from the underside of the brain uh, looking up and uh, this I'm not sure if you can see the fine detail here but this shows uh, the common location of many of the aneurysms including posterior communicating artery, terminal carotid, anterior communicating and middle cerebral artery aneurysms are about 20 percent of the uh, aneurysms uh, are, are, the aneurysms that occur about 20 percent of them occur in the middle cerebral artery location I should say and a smaller portion, as you know, occur in the, in the posterior fossa or posterior circulation. Um, some studies uh, quote about 10 to 15 percent 